for this to get, say. Okay, welcome everybody to our, our um, first session of the leadership series. Happy New Year, everybody. Um, I couldn't be more excited for our guest. So Tyranny Nettles is um, with UPRO. She is a talent leader there. Um, they are going to become a partner with Recruiting Innovation and the Ernestine McClendon Talent Grant. Um, they she's, she's going to tell us all about it, but um, they have apprenticeship resources. So for our folks that are graduating that might need some more experience before they can come fully uh, employable or get that first job, which we know can be so hard sometimes, um, UPRO has an apprenticeship program. So Tyranny's going to tell us about that. Um, but in the meantime, Tyranny, if you would, we would love to hear about your career origin story because almost nobody goes to college. I don't even know how you would go to college to be a recruiter, let alone other things. They do come to recruiting innovation to be a recruiter, but how did you get started? And like, what were the key milestones in your career to get where you are today? Uh, yes, thank you so much. So my name is Tyranny Nettles. I serve as a director of recruiting over at UPRO, which stands for Europe Professional Resources. And we'll dive into that a little bit deeper, but basically UPRO is a niche recruiting firm that's dedicated to placing unrepresented talent. Um, and our job is to create avenues for them to get a fair market wage, career mobility, and constant opportunities to upskill, get certifications, or whatever it may be. So that is a little bit about UPRO, but how did I end up on this journey? Um, I laugh here because I always tell people, I didn't choose this life, this life chose me. <laughs> and I tried to run from it multiple times because I just wasn't sure, right? When you're growing up as a kid, they never teach you that one day you should become a recruiter. It's always be a doc doctor, a lawyer, a nurse anything, a librarian, anything except the person who's actually making the connections and changing people's lives for generations to come. So I was born and raised in Mississippi, not the Mississippi you see on TV, but the Southern part of the state where the beach is. And I always tell people I enjoy long walks on the beach and to the beach because I grew up about two miles from the Mississippi Gulf Coast. Not water you swim in, but water to look at. Um, but I went to college at the University of Mississippi, also known as Ole Miss, and there I got a marketing and public relations degree. Um, shortly after graduating from college, um, even now looking back, during my time in college, I was always recruiting people to come to Ole Miss. Like, I was even selected for this organization, this like hoity-toity organization where they pick 10 to 15 people on campus and they put us in these thousand dollar suits and we meet with all of the high stakeholders that come to campus any ceo any c-suite people um anyone that had a lot of money in their bank account i got to interact with these people smile and convince them to make some kind of commitment to Ole Miss whether it was time money resources whatever it may be well that didn't click for me until i graduated from college and started applying for jobs and my mentor at the time said, hey, we want you to come and be an official recruiter for Ole Miss. So I traveled, I met, uh, managed about six or seven different states and I went into private schools um, and recruited students to come to our university. Um, I did that for three years. I, from there, had a 60% growth my first year in my role. So from the previous recruiter to me, that area boomed. So we uncovered, okay, maybe I know a little bit about what I'm doing, let's lead some teams. Uh, so I started there and started coaching the recruiting uh, teams there and did that for two years before packing up my dog in my car and moving to Dallas, Texas. Um, when I moved to Dallas, I was sure of two things. One, I did not wanna interact with 18 year olds anymore. And two, <laughs> I wanted to be in a space that could allow me to change the trajectory of my life because I was doing it for everybody else. And in education um, placements, you didn't get commissions. It wasn't a high salary range. My first job was $34,000. And at that time, I thought I was making big money. Um, so when I moved to Dallas, Texas, I shifted and started doing healthcare staffing. Um, and in healthcare, I did cardiology, executive search, any specialty, um, surgery specialty, um, or any ology behind the doctor's name. So those high specialized physicians, um, I started placing those 
in these large healthcare systems throughout the US. So I still ended up in a space where I was interacting with the C-suite um, level employees, the stakeholders who are making these big level decisions when it came to medical directors are bringing in an electrophysiology cardiologist, right? That's somebody you're giving almost a million dollars a year to do work. Um, so as time was going there, I was doing what I did, recruiting and having a good uh, session. But outside of recruiting, I was still coaching, mentoring other recruiters and still maintaining a life that I wanted to live. And that life surrounded diversity, equity, inclusion before it became this big buzzword. Um, I serve as a board member on Big Brothers, Big Sisters of Greater Dallas, um, lead a community service organization here in, in Dallas that thrives with women and, and young girls in mentorship through their career or development. Um, and all of those things make sense. So you had purpose over here um, and you had work over here, right? And uh, one day I get this call that says, hey, we know you're doing all these things. We have this company called UPRO that we want to talk to you about. Um, at the time, I thought the call was about me mentoring um, candidates at UPRO. But I found out that they had um, a director recruiting position open to report to the CEO and needed someone to come in and build their entire recruitment department and processes. So it was a big step, right? Because at that point, I'd been in healthcare staffing for five or six years, um, and I was going to something completely different that was surrounding tech finance and business related roles. So I've been in this role now a little bit under a year, um, but all the things that I've learned in the years previous have been a great asset for me. So long story, that is my career track. It doesn't look like anything that it should in movies. It doesn't look like anything you hear on TV, um, but it's mine. And through the work that I've done, I've been able to be I've earned, actually, um, the staffing industry analysis. Saying that ultimately it's about why I chose or what how you pro's mission aligns is that I get to serve people and I get to make an impact or make someone's experience not resemble what mine looks like, right? Uh -huh. So knowing that I can be that active in other people's lives or have that impact and them impact me as well really motivates me to, to log in every day and put my best foot forward. Can you tell us a little bit more? And I, you might've missed it. I might've missed it in the middle, but like, <clears throat> at what point did it go from like, Hey, this is a cool job to be like, Oh, this is my career. Oh yeah. We talked a little bit about that. I, I told them, um, I wanted to be very transparent with them. Uh, nine months out of the year, I'm like, wow, this is my career. And the other three months, I'm like, whoa, I've gained such a wealth of knowledge recruiting. I can go do anything I want in the world. I can write a recruiting handbook. I can go start a consulting firm. I can go do all these other things, right? Um, and the reason I think we develop that mindset as recruiters is because we realize once we start recruiting, we learn so much we become a subject matter expert in all things, whether it's on the human resource side, when it comes to different specialty or tracks, coaching, mentoring. As you start recruiting, you're gonna be like, wait, how did I sign up to be a mentor for, for six people? And it's because you know so much that will help them change the trajectory of their life. So nine out of the 12 months, I'm very sure I'm a recruiter. The other three months, I'm like, huh, what else can I do? <laughs> I love that. I also say that um, recruiting is like a micro MBA because yeah. next to next to the executive team, I know what every single department in the team is. I know every role does. I know how to measure success in each of them. Mm -hmm. And it's like, and I've had a friend like and now that I started my own business, it's like, oh, I know a bit about marketing. I know a bit about finance. I know a bit about product development. And it was like, my friend was like, how did you learn all these things? And it was like, because I hired the people that did all those things for 10 years. And now like I, I learned by proxy. It's so cool. Like, and curiosity is such a natural quality of a recruiter that like, I'm fascinated by every position, even the nerdiest ones. I'm just mm -hmm. like, 
now I know a little bit about data science. That's cool, even though I couldn't do it. But yeah, it's a, it's a micro MBA, this, this role. Yeah, absolutely. And, and even to think further, I think about all those skills. And then I think about the soft skills. Recruiters should really read articles about emotional intelligence. Recruiters pick up on leadership skills. Recruiters pick up on communication skills. My favorite book um, is called Crucial Conversations, right? Because it really challenges the way we have tough conversations and makes us reset. And as a recruiter, you will have very crucial conversations with hiring managers and you have to be able to ask those effective questions so that they think that the right way is their idea and you're consulting them through the process. So as a recruiter, you have so many skills and before you know it, you've you've like you've, you've gained an MBA, <laughs> a mini MBA. <laughs> yes, that's right. And, I, and it's like, and like you were saying, it's like you could either stay in the same field, but like have the different tributaries off of the main river, mm-hmm. or maybe you get inspired or like, no, like, like I did. So I did UX recruiting for a good while. Um, and then when I was sort of like burning out at the, the corporate level, I was like, I need a change. And I actually got inspired by all my UX candidates. And I was like, I could do UX. And so I just did a little boot camp and became a UX researcher, which is actually like two sides of the same coin, like talking to people about their problems and what they're wanting to do. And and that was ultimately what gave me the inspiration to come back and, and, and start this company. But I would never have thought of UX if I hadn't been a recruiter for it for a while also. So it's like, yeah, it's such a stepping stone that can become such a big thing. I love that. Love that. Mm-hmm. Awesome. And then can you tell us a little bit more about UPro specifically and um, how you all landed on like apprenticeships? You, you, you alluded it to it at the beginning, but I, I would love to hear more about UPro and your programs that you all are building and some of the successes that you're seeing for your folks. Yeah, so... UPRO stands for a year of professional resources. As I mentioned, our entire entity and mission is to represent traditionally underrepresented talent and placing them in jobs. It gives them a fair market wage, um, career mobility, um, and the skills and resources to continually grow in that role. Um, We do three programs, well, three types of job placements. We are a staffing firm. We do our apprenticeship program, which is four to six months in a typically Fortune 500 companies. We do have some private equity firms we throw in the mix as well. But you go on that assignment for four to six months out of the year. It's 37 hours a week, um, including one hour of professional development that's required. And it's on the job training. You're constantly engaging with your manager there. Every week you have a new uh, required upskilling that you'll need to complete online while also working on assignment. And we've seen so much success there. Uh, in the last two years, we're at 86% of perm placements for our apprenticeship program. Um, outside of that, we do traditional contract placements and we do permanent placements as well. So those are the three avenues. Outside of the three avenues of job placements, I talk a lot about upskilling and uh, certifications. We provide free upskilling and certifications to all of our talent community. So if you're interested in receiving upskilling opportunities, you can receive that through our RBM Skills Bill, which allows you to go in, go through the entire training and get any certification you want um, that's available through them. And we also provide certifications through Google Coursera and other types of platforms. I mean, even myself and six of my senior recruiters are going through the recruiting innovation uh, training right now to walk away with our tech certification. So we are a company that is completely committed to upskilling because we know that once we get that talent in that community, A lot of times in those entry-level roles, they're stuck there, right? Because then there's a comparison that needs to happen regarding education. Well, they may not want to go and get a four-year degree, but we can give them the skills and certifications they need so that they can also receive promotions and um, career uh, career trajectory as well, right? We don't put them there to keep the same job for 30 years. Is the apprenticeship to come on board permanent with UPRO or is it with the clients that you're working with? 
So the apprenticeship program, it, every apprentice is paired with a corporation. And at the end of your time on assignment with that corporation, the goal is to go permanent there. Like my entire goal in life is to place you on that assignment. If you need me, you're calling me about a certification or to talk through a mock interview because you're applying for a higher level position, but you go directly to that corporation. And how does the matching work? Is it sort of like, do you, what sort of the assessment as, as talent comes in, um, what's sort of the process for identifying which path might be the right one for them or what kind of organization might be the right match? Because that, that also matters too. I can imagine on your 86% success rate. Yeah, I absolutely. About that. So yeah. I will say that all of our apprentices are US-based. I do want to be very clear there. Um, but with their progress, we match you based on skills that you develop. So for instance, it, yesterday I was talking to candidates who were software development in Atlanta, Georgia. They went through a training program for software development. However, they've never worked or gotten paid for as a software development, right? In nowhere in that track, but that's where they desire to be. So our matching happens based on what training you have went through and where you live, right? Because our employer partners for the apprenticeship program, I would say about 97% of them are in office. So that developer, were you, were you helping them find a, a developer job or were they transitioning to recruiting? We were helping them find a developer job. So we had an employer, we have an employer in Atlanta that's looking for an apprentice who has been through some training for software development. Well, I have referrals for you. <laughs> <laughs> yep. As long as they've been through training, absolutely send them over. They cannot like have the, the full stack developer boot camps and stuff that passes for your training. Okay. I've got, a, I got people. Thank you. Recruiter's going to recruit. I mean, how do you not turn it? How do you Well, turn it off, my right? company is so <laughs> slow right now. We don't even have our university our Darty University going on. So I'm like, you know, people, I'm not going to hold off on somebody for six months just because I don't have anything. Well, thank you. Well, that's what recruiting is all about. Helping people, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Forward. When I'm 80 years old, hanging out, sipping some tea or something, I'll be thinking just like you, Tierney. Look, oh man, all the people that I helped. What a great feeling. Mm -hmm. Not what my title was. I like that you plan on sipping tea. I plan on sipping something way stronger at 80 <laughs> on the beach. I said, or something, right? Oh. I mean, <laughs> dot, dot, dot. <laughs> I have to lose all the weight I gained from all my sips the last two years. So. <laughs> oh, that's a good follow-up though. Uh, question, Monica. Um, can you talk to us about like, are there different tracks at UPRO? Do you service everybody or are there certain like bread and butter we are growing rapidly. Currently, we have eight tracks, quality assurance, our business, um, business, our human resources track, project management, um, IT support, software development, data analyst. I feel like I'm just going down. What am I missing? Yeah, finance. All of those tracks are what we operate in right now. Um, and they're broad, right? So for instance, um, in our business HR track, we have an HR coordinator position open right now with TJX, which is the owner of TJ Maxx, Marshalls, and all of those um, places where I spend a lot of money. But yeah, so those are our tracks that we have currently, but we're growing so rapidly um, as new avenues come in, we're going to move forward with them. That's it. And so the recruiter function lives under that business services umbrella. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that business operations umbrella is where recruiter functions live. Um, project management is currently under that or that avenue as well. Human resource roles, recruiting roles. We currently have, I think, three recruiters over at Meta. Their assignments are ending. They're a contract, so their assignments are ending, and they won't be extending, unfortunately, due to everything that's happening in our tech world right now. But when and if the world shifts, not if, because it will, but when, we'll be ready to go. <laughs> well, and, and to their credit, now they've got six, nine months at Meta, which sometimes you just need that first something. Mm-hmm. To get in the door. And that's what y'all are doing. You're, it's, it's, they call that like the missing rung, right? Like if you're thinking of a ladder of growth, like 
certain communities or previous job skills, you're just missing that first rung. And I love that UPRO is for focusing on getting you that first rung and then it's off to the races. So even right. though sad, they're not getting renewed, but guess what? Doors just open for them. That's incredible. Right. Yeah, that's true. Awesome. We got a couple of questions. Devanji, did you want to go first? Am I pronouncing it correct? Is it a soft G, Devanji? I, uh, yeah, it's, it's actually Devangi. Devangi. Okay. Devangi. Yeah. Thank you. But other than that, it's good. <laughs> okay. Devangi, what's your question? Yeah. So Chirini, I just have a question for you that you just mentioned, uh, that the roles are strictly, uh, in, in the U S right. So, because I live in uh, Germany, Munich. So is there a chance that if I can get some opportunity from here? Oh, I love that. I will, <laughs> I'm going to come visit you soon. Uh, currently, sure. we, with our apprenticeship programs and our employer regulations, we only have opportunities in the United States. Okay. But as we're learning, right, recruiting is all about relationships. So let's connect because I love to connect you with one of our employer partners who does U.S in um, other country placements. It's called Jobs for Humanity. We actually just signed a contract with them where we'll be able to place their US candidates, but they get jobs for all over the world. So um, I'm gonna post my contact information and if you'll DM me or email me, we can get you signed up there. So if there are any opportunities, you'll be able to go from there. Awesome, and we'll, we'll send um, a follow-up email with not one, but two recording uh, files. And then I'll ensure that you, your contact details are in there as well. Um, sure. And we'll, we can like formalize some things as we get a little bit later in our program. Um, but we'll make, I'll make sure that everyone gets your contact details, Terry. Awesome. That's Great. awesome. Uh, it, it's really, it sounds really exciting. Thank, exciting. Thank you. Uh, yeah. And uh, and just one more question. Uh, so for these roles, so do you really need some kind of an, uh, like prior experience? Uh, or will it like work with having a theoretical knowledge and, you know, just looking for just to start my career. So I just wanted to ask that as well. Yeah, for for their site, I don't know. Okay. But I promise to schedule some research so I can figure that out for you. Um, okay. But it's a huge platform. I know it's like 60,000 people there. Um, the creator is working directly with us. Um, we're building... Um, some systems and API so that their talent can come directly to our um, website. But once all the tech is out of the way, I will ask him directly about you and if he has any employers that we can connect you with. Great. It sounds really when exciting. When do you complete your program? What's the completion date? Uh, it's uh, It finishes off in March. Okay. Right. Yeah, yep. end of March. Sure. They'll have March. certified technical recruiters. Yay. <laughs> Yay. Yeah. And I just want to side note, Sue, and then I'll, I'll probably put it in the closing, but our, we just launched our, um, actually, I'll do it in the closing. Never mind. Don't let me hijack this. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome. Awesome. And, and uh, is it Micheline? Yes. <laughs> Yay. Micheline, you have a question too, please. Yeah, uh, so you mentioned about the like HR coordinator role and um, I also I don't have any recruiting experience. Um, so I was really happy to get into this program so I can get like learn um, to give me kind of like a leg up to to getting a job. So if we were interested in like the HR coordinator roles or any other roles, how would we um, looking look into applying into those roles? Yeah, absolutely. You can go to our UPRO Careers app. It's literally Y-U-P-R-O Careers, and we will post the jobs there for you to apply for. That role is a contract opportunity, um, and it should be open within the um, end of the day because I saw it come across this morning, but you'll be able to go there and apply directly for that job. Okay, and do you, would you rather us finish the program first before applying or do you think I could apply now and then keep going with the program I want to be honest with you I wouldn't I wouldn't wait I mean the good with the way the market is right now why not go ahead and put your application out there how long it takes to interview these days my god like you'll be 
out of the program, like, no, go ahead and apply. <laughs> okay. Thank you. It's insane. The market is insane. I've never seen this in my decade of recruiting. So I don't wait to do anything anymore. Can you, what, what are you seeing? Tell us more. What's your, your perch? What are you seeing is the current state versus what it used to be like? I think COVID post COVID, well, we're still in the middle of COVID now, but post the height of COVID, the market has just been um, very, I don't know the word, but you know, previous, the traditional route um, was you apply for a job, you get an interview, you go through the interview process. You put you put your two weeks notice in at your permanent role. You start in two weeks at your new role, right? You might have to go through a background to push that out about two, three or four weeks, whatever it may be. But you had a clear line into the job that you applied for through your interview process. You were told expectations up front of your interviews being a two-step interview process versus a three-step interview process. Um, there was not this big lag of weeks in between the steps. But right now in the market, um, it's really weird because if you ask someone on a Thursday, they're going to say it's an employer market. And if you ask them on that next Tuesday, they're going to say it's a candidate market. The tech world is very uh, fascinating because we just saw massive layoffs. We're still seeing them happen with Salesforce and Goldman Sachs. But then you see Meta saying that they're about to do a huge hiring, right? How are you hiring when you just shifted the lives of thousands of people between Thanksgiving holiday and the end of the year, right? So it's very unpredictable. I never seen anything like this, but how I have really combat our talent is to one, make hiring a full-time job, right? dedicate yourselves to creating multiple resumes. All of them should show skill, experience, and then education because the buzzword in the industry right now is skills-based hiring. And that is a benefit of everyone on this call. So create multiple resumes. The one click apply in LinkedIn is not your friend. Please stop utilizing it because your resume is not prepared for that job description because that job description, your resume is going through a system that is looking for keywords attached to that job description. And if that system does not pull, that AI technology does not pull your resume, a recruiter will never view it. Recruiters used to work in this process of looking at resumes for about 20 to 30 seconds that is now down to seven seconds because they don't have the support they need in order to hire people. You used to hear back from jobs within the two week to 30 day at max. Now you'd never hear back at all. So you have to really be clear on your expectations, but also be cautiously optimistic, right? Do everything you can in order to get into that company. I am a proponent of informational meetings. An informational meeting is when you request a meeting with someone in that company to build a relationship, find out more about the culture or the role that you're seeking, and then have them refer you to the job that you're trying to apply for or send an email to the hiring manager to speak on your behalf. You got to get creative, right? Um, because this new industry is very tough. A lot of the people that were used to advocate for you were laid off. And now these same companies are saying they need to do massive hiring. So where do you stand, you know? And I would follow up on that too, when looking for a job is like, really be also equally thoughtful about your self-care. Um, know that it's not personal. It is mm -hmm. not a reflection on your value or your importance. If you're not hearing back or you're getting declines, Tyranny made a good point. Everyone's overwhelmed right now, all the recruiters, everybody. And so make sure, you know, maybe you time block it, give yourself three hours in the morning, go for a walk, pet your dog, do things that make you feel good. And then maybe pick up another hour, but like you are pushing a boulder up a hill right now. Mm -hmm. And just, and lean on this community too. be like, Hey, I'm just feeling like really down today. Can, you know, anyone want to chat or just like, you know, just lean on your community and we're empathizing with you because it's gnarly out there, but it also, 
cautiously optimistic, right? Because it's also like a moment where there's an opportunity as, a, as an industry on our side that it's sort of like, maybe we can regroup and like, you know, reset who we are and the value that we lead our, with our organizations. And hopefully that means they start supporting the recruiters more and yeah, but <clears throat> Equal parts, job hunt, self-care is, is I would highly true. recommend that too. Absolutely. When we were doing mock interviews for our candidates in community, so not necessarily on assignment with us, but they've taken perm roles at these large corporations and they were getting laid off and wanted to come in for mock interviews. My first thing I would do, I have a little bucket and I was like, okay, I'm going to pull a question out of the bucket. We're talking nothing about work, right? Um, and the questions in the bucket are just random. You know, if you had to be an animal, what would you be? Because even at your best, when you are looking for a job, you all you feel is that negative self-talk, all the things that the world are saying, and it's not healthy. It is not. No. We have to advocate for ourselves. So we got to treat ourselves well. Yeah, very much so. And, you know, the goal with the, the talent grant, with partnering with UPRO, with our mentor program, we're just trying to get you as many hits, it swings at bat as we can, right? We want your, your skill stuff to be shown up, your certifications, the mentorship, like this is a, it's a people business, like sign up for as many mentors as you think you can have right now and start building the relationship with UPRO and, and those sort of things, because it just is a matter of time. Um, and you'll find the right spot. And also like, I really also believe, um, I just, I trust the universe, right? And so like trust delays sometimes, like it's not pleasant or you get a decline, but I think about, I have two different specific jobs in my career that I wouldn't have gotten if I had gotten the job right before it, which wasn't as good. And so also like lean into the discomfort a little bit and just know it's not gonna be forever. You're gonna find your right spot. And so, it's actually good to dodge some balls <laughs> mm -hmm. that as is well. So true. That is so um, true. If you were to offer our group one piece of advice or, you know, some uh, something that really helped you in your career as you were growing as sort of like a closing a bit, Tyranny, what what do you what would you like to share with our, our community? I would say I want you, even if you're not in your recruiting role, something I had to tell myself even this morning because um, I was having a very tough morning. I want you to advocate for yourself to yourself like you do everybody else. And by that, I mean, I want you to eliminate, practice eliminating negative self-talk, right? All day as a recruiter, you're getting on the phone. You're reading resumes of other people. You are talking to hiring managers about other people. You're looking at LinkedIn profiles about other people. Sometimes those people are further in their career. Sometimes they're a little bit behind you. I've advocated for people that make money I may never see in my life, right? But I needed to channel that same energy for myself. So self-care is real. Advocating for yourself is real. Taking time to love on your puppy is real. Um, but yeah, take care of yourselves. Yeah, because if you don't take care of yourself and advocate for yourself, then you can't do it well for other people. Imposter syndrome is real. Depression, anxiety, all the things of this world are real. So take care of yourself because at the end of the day, while you are loving and changing the lives of other people, you have to also do that for yourself. Love, love, love that. And I actually just heard some great advice too, coming back to that imposter syndrome, especially as we're entering a new career or some things. To actually like when you're in a good headspace, just take out some time and like actually write out all of your accomplishments. And as if you can be as like quantitative as possible, whether it was like an awesome assignment in, in university, you're crushing the tech recruiter certification, you, you know, like even qualitative things like I can talk to anyone about anything, like give yourself a list of all the things that is you and your accomplishments and go to that when you start to feel your balloon I love that, you know, um, and so it's like, sometimes we get so much in our head that we just need to step back and be like, you know what, I'm a total boss, I can't even like I got to just bring in that energy and like, a side note for me too is like I've got a couple I've got a little I'm a Spotify freak but I've got actually a playlist of pump me up music. 
And energy is a real thing. Energy is real. And so it's like, maybe before you send that super important application or whatever, or you're going to write that cover letter, put on your favorite music, dance around a little bit, lift up your energy and then be like, all right, here we go. Ba -ba 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 -ba. And you're, it's just going to be a totally different vibe. And so one thing we're in control of is our energy in that way. And, and anxiety and depression is totally real as well. So figure out what your things are um, to lift you up. I actually heard that as another good tip is like, some things we should know about ourselves are like, what makes for a really good day? Is it talking to a loved one or a friend? Is it getting your yoga or your walk-in? Like know what things you need to have a good day and make sure you're getting those things too. Um, it's so easy just to grind, grind, wake up and grind. And it's like, that's not what this life is about. And I don't think that that's what this post COVID world is about. You see people being like, I'm not putting up with this anymore. Mm -hmm. I deserve better. And well, guess what? We have to give it to ourselves first. And so really you know, just do really nice things for yourself, I think, as you're going into this world, the stage. So as we la wrap up with our last minute, <clears throat> Tyranny, I'm going to share your uh, contact details that you just put in here. I'll share the email. Is there a time that is best for people to start engaging with your pro sooner rather than later, would you say? Should they start the conversation now? Should they ping you in March? Like, what do you feel like is best yeah. for you all? I think... And me just being very transparent, the industry is so weird right now, right? So we're not even seeing a lot of roles. But I would rather you be engaged now and be a part of it when it booms than to come later when nothing's set in stone, right? And be too late to the party. So I would say go ahead and engage now, even something as simple as sending me an email, right? With your resume and career goals, where you live or what you're desiring, that a great way to start um, so that I can have those on my desktop ready to go in, in the event that we do get what you're looking for. And sometimes I'll send you things that you aren't looking for because I may see something in you and your skill, your transferable skills that may get you to the level you're trying to be at, right? That stepping stone. Excellent. Awesome. And then last note, everyone on the Ernest McClendon side, make sure to get your mentor application form in. I think deadline is Thursday or Friday. And I just want to say like literally in the first four days of um, recruiting for mentors, we had 37 mentors already apply, which is incredible. So, and as of yesterday, we only had nine of our talent grant people sign up. So that means each of those can go get up to three to four mentors. So, <laughs> you know, there's plenty out there. So sign up for the mentorship and you can sign up for as many mentors as you want as well and help promote the, the mentor recruitment as well. Tyranny, this is such a pleasure. Thanks for bearing with me and my weird tech issues. Um, I am a mere mortal. Got to remind myself. Um, but this is so wonderful. We cannot wait. We're so excited to be partnering with you all um, at UPRO. So, and thanks for everyone that persevered and made it to this second call too. And thanks for everyone that showed up on the first one. So yeah, everyone have an amazing you. week. Happy January. Um, and we'll see you all soon. Thanks, Tyranny. Thanks, everybody. Thanks so much, everyone. Thanks, thank you. Real pleasure. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.